good all the time. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. Somebody said, Brother Demar, why did you say that three times? Well, in the Hebrew or the Chaldean language, when an individual or a term is used in the Bible three times, like in, for instance, over in Isaiah chapter 6, it says, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. Nothing is in the Bible accidentally. And the Holy Spirit, what He was saying there, that God is holy in the superlative degree. But I believe God is also good in the superlative degree. The psalmist said, I would have fainted had I not seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I've lived long enough on this earth to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In Psalms 107, uh, four times in that chapter, uh, it says, Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for His goodness, His wonderful works to the children of men. It speaks of the goodness of God. In verse 1, it says, or verse 2, it says, Let the redeemed say so. So my Bible tells me that I'm supposed to tell you and speak to you about the goodness of the Lord. So God is indeed good all the time. I'm happy to be here tonight. Uh, I've been looking forward to this for some time now, and I've been asked to speak about strengthening the spiritual heart. And we'll be talking about that in just a little while. But we want to talk to you a little bit here in way of invitation tonight. Uh, I'm here to encourage you to unlock your heart. You see, our hearts have a lock on it, and there's a key, and, and we're in control of the key. And so I'm here tonight to encourage you to unlock your heart and let God in. I'm here tonight to encourage you to unlock your hearts and let Christ in. You know, we've got to have good hearts if we go to heaven when we die. My sweet wife, Dixie, and our special son, Big John, who has Down syndrome, John's not able to be with us tonight, and if he was here, he would probably tell you, roll tide. <laughs> He's a big Bama boy, and, and uh, he loves Gene Stallings. If you say, uh, who's the greatest football coach who ever lived? He says, Gene Stallings. Uh, but he and, and Coach Stallings, are, he, he, they're close they know one another, and, and, and he tells people, he said, me and the he calls him coach. He said, me and the coach, he said, we tight. We tight. Uh, but I'm sorry they couldn't be here tonight to, to be a part of this. Uh, but um, uh, they send their uh, regrets and wish they could have been here. But I want to talk to you about uh, strengthening the spiritual heart a little later in this lesson. But I am reminded of the young man who's working in the produce department at Publix. And he was standing there, and this lady came up to him, and she said, uh, Sir, excuse me. And he said, Yes. He, he, she said, I want to buy a half head of lettuce. He looked at her, and he said, Lady? He said, Are you serious? She said, Yes, sir. She said, I'd like to buy a half a head of lettuce. He said, Listen, God made a lettuce, a head of lettuce whole. And that's the way we sell them. <laughs> she said, you mean that I've been a customer for this in this store for all these years, and you're unwilling to sell me a half a head of lettuce? And then he realized this woman was serious. And he said, well, now, ma'am, he said, I can go ask the manager if you'd like. He said, she said, I'd like. And he said, well, okay, just a minute. And boy, he marched up to the front of that store, and the manager was standing there, and he said, hey, hey, he said, you're not going to believe this. He said, there's a lame brain idiot woman, lady back there, who wants to buy a half head of lettuce. And the manager looked at him and went. And he went, he turned around, and there she stood. She, kept, she followed right behind him, right up to the front. And he said, and this nice lady wants to buy the other half. <laughs> hey, listen, our tongues can get us in a lot of trouble. And you know, uh, James said, our tongue is set on fire of hell. Our tongue gets us in all kinds of troubles. But why is it that our tongue does it? We're going to be talking more about all of this in the, in the lesson that will be coming up. But our tongue many times is speaking because of what's in our hearts. My sweet Dixie, my lovely wife, she often says to me as things are happening in life and we're here and there, and she might lean over to me and she said, 
We've got to have a good heart if we go to heaven. She sees situations out there in life, and she'll lean over and she says, Honey, we've got to have a good heart if we go to heaven. And I want to tell you here tonight, young people, you've got to have a good heart if you go to heaven. And you need to open your heart to God and allow God to do what He would do in your life. You know, in our lives, we need to understand that bad thoughts, come into the, it comes into the mind and the hearts of some of the very best people in the world. But we have to work on purifying our hearts. Because you see, it's out of our hearts that these issues come. Look over in your Bible to Matthew uh, chapter uh, 15, verse 18. Matthew 15, 18. He says, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. So many of the times when you see people uh, using their tongue Im improperly, it's because they've got a heart issue. They have a heart problem. And their mouth is speaking because their heart is not right. And you see people doing evil deeds. You see people making mistakes and slipping and sinning and doing the wrong things. And you say, why? Now I wonder why he did that. It's because of the condition of the heart. We've got to have good hearts if we plan to go to heaven when we die. Now, I know this needs to be a brief uh, invitation, so let me uh, call your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. He says, I hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for those that love him. God is preparing something beyond description, beyond our wildest and fondest imagination. He's preparing something that, that we can't even begin to comprehend. For those, listen to me, who have good hearts and those who strengthen their spiritual heart. I want to ask you tonight in way of imitation, have you unlocked your heart to God? You say, oh, yeah, but I'm, no, I'm talking about all the way. I'm not talking about just taking that key and, 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 and just opening it part way. I'm talking about sticking the key into your heart and opening it up. Allowing God, have you, have you allowed God to really take a resident in your heart? Have you allowed Christ to come in? There's one thing you can mark down in your mind tonight. God will not take that key to your heart and forcefully open it and enter in. Jesus Christ will not do that either. But what God and Christ are waiting on is for you to reach there and take the key that opens your heart and unlock that heart. And allow Jesus to come in. Jesus is the way of life. Jesus is the way to eternal life. And you know, when I'm, I preached in 41 countries of the world. And when I'm in these countries, I tell them, I, when I go in there, I, I, I'll say, hey, hey. And they go like this. They're not used to a guy like me. I, I notice some of you aren't used to a guy like me. <laughs> And, and, and I said, I'm a good news preacher. I got good news. I'm a minister of reconciliation. You can be reconciled to God. In and through Jesus Christ. And so tonight, will you be reconciled to God? Will you open your heart? Will you open your life? Will you uh, uh, obey the gospel? Maybe there's some sitting here that have never been baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Will you tonight? Let us help you. Let us assist you. Will you take the step to obey Jesus Christ? Letting Him come fully into your life. Maybe you've been contemplating it, but haven't taken the step. If you're here, probably most in this auditorium tonight, probably most have already obeyed the gospel. But I want to ask you this. What have you done with your tongue? 
Have you been doing irreparable damage by the things you say? What have you been doing with your deeds? Have you been doing great damage by the way you've been living? Open your heart. Open your heart tonight and come and ask God and Christ to forgive you. And that precious, powerful, redeeming, sanctifying, justifying blood of Christ will cleanse you. If you're subject to that invitation, we're going to sing a song for your encouragement. Will you come while we stand and while we sing?